<laughs> Welcome to Cooking with Cochise, the first edition and probably the last. Today we will be preparing the moose knuckle turkey, um, especially for my friend Karen. Go Huskies! We have our ingredients together. We have one 12 pound turkey, 10 to 14 pounds is what it says on the package generally. I have removed the giblets from the front and the neck from the back and this nuisance right here that is good for co over cooking turkeys. I'm also going to take out the wire and I'm going to remove this, the Pope's nose. And the reason it's called the Pope's nose is you put your nose, your two fingers on it like that and just twist it right <laughs> on The vegetables we have are celery, carrots, and onions. This is a basic mirepoix. It's going to go in the bottom of our pan to hold the turkey up out of the juices so it gets nice and crisp. We have some seasonings. We have rosemary, sage, celery seed, pepper, salt, Italian seasonings, and what is about one and a half sticks of butter and you could save your giblets and everything to make your gravy with but I just use good old-fashioned Swanson's low sodium chicken broth because this is all about a quick fast turkey that is delicious so we're going to clean our vegetables up real quick we want to just roughly peel our carrots most of these vegetables are going to cook down to either nothing um, and they're not actually going to be part of the dish. Once again, they're just to hold the turkey up off the bottom of the pan. And I'm just using the back of my knife to scrape the skin off. This is something that some people don't agree with. You could use a peeler if you feel better. But I spend more time looking for a peeler than I do actually. peels in the garbage. Now we're going to cut big chunks because these vegetables are going to have to cook for a good hour and we want them to just really hold the turkey up off the bottom. It doesn't have to be fancy. They don't even have to be uniform. Once again, you can eat these vegetables but I generally don't. They're just there for effect and for aromatic. Celery, I use a disposable pan to cook my turkeys in because I do so much cooking and cleaning I don't like to wash dishes on my day off. We'll do two onions. The onions don't have to be pretty, they don't have to be small. So in this case I'm just going to cut off the top and bottom ends and it'll make peeling them a lot easier. That way you just take one layer off and the onions are peeled. I'm using sweet onions. You can use white, yellow, Bermuda, red, whatever makes you happy, whatever's cheaper, whatever you have in the cabinet. I'm just going to cut the onion in half. And then make large dots. Probably three, three cuts in each onion. And once again, into the pan. We'll just mix them around. So what we have is a nice nice base of vegetables that should be about an inch deep in the bottom of the pan. Now we have to carve the turkey. Cleaning the turkey is the most <coughs> difficult part and you can practice on a chicken but it's best just to practice on a turkey. Just um, 
I guarantee you can do it. It looks frightening, but it's not really. You can also have a butcher do this. When you tell your butcher you'd like it done, you just tell them you want it shell, breastbone, and ribs removed, legs and wings on. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull the, the inner carcass out and we're going to leave our, our wings and these bones on. We're going to leave our thigh and leg bones on. And the best way to do that is to cut right here down the backbone on either side and you can feel the backbone. You just want to cut that with a knife just on either side of the backbone and just sort of spread that out a little bit. Now you can feel right in here there's a blade bone. We want to get on the outside of that bone. That is the beginning of our wishbone on the other side of the turkey too. Then what I'm going to actually do is, is stand the turkey up and I'm going to cut that backbone completely out. With a good sharp knife go all the way through, through the, th the thigh blade, through the backbone, on the other side of that wing bone, and then down the other side of the backbone the same way. And the whole backbone out. If you're making stock, you can throw that in the stock. Unfortunately, this does cut into the oyster, which is some people think the best part of the turkey. Uh, most people don't actually appreciate it, so I don't mind doing this so much. And then we have to pull out this inside, and that's actually a lot easier than you might think. You're just going to go riding the meat in between the meat and the bone all the way down. When you get to this part of the thigh, it gets a little tricky around the oysters. But all I'm doing is separating meat from bone. And each time I'll just kind of spread it out a little bit with my knife. When we get in here, it's where this arm attaches to the shell. And we get down here, it's where this leg attaches to this blade right here for the thigh. And this is a ball and socket joint right in here. You can see it start to happen. All I'm going to do is put my knife down in that socket and wiggle it around a little bit and it'll pop right out. <coughs> you hear it snap. That's, that's it popping out. And we're just going to cut that loose. Alright now, before we pull this away, we have to free all of our breast meat down in here. And we're just going to follow the bone. I use these fingers to pull it all away. Follow the bone. Now, the wing joint, same thing. We want to find that joint, which is right in here. And we just want to get our knife right in the middle of it and pop it free. Sometimes you have to coerce it. <coughs> pop that free. Cut this free. Now here's where you can mess up the supreme of the carcass. You gotta remember we're working actually on the front <coughs> side of the turkey now but from the back. So we want to just slowly pull away. This is our the beginning of our wishbone right here. That's going to stay on. Can't have a Thanksgiving turkey without a wishbone. When was the last time you saw a food documentary where the cameraman makes their own comments? First time for everything. <laughs> All right. So now we've, we've gotten down to this side of the turkey is all the way free except for the very end of the blade that is the breast. This is our the back side of the breast. This is the supreme or the tenderloin. Now we're going to kind of push this back together and we're going to do the other side exactly the same way. We're going to come down here.
and we're just going to follow down. Now all we've got is this, the keel or the blade of the turkey holding that meat on. You don't want to cut too much here because you want the, for presentation purposes, you want that turkey to, to be joined in the middle. If you're not careful here, you can cut the turkey apart. And there it is. That is the shell of the turkey. This is that blade bone. Here's the wish bone. Here's the two plates. You can see that little ball where the the leg joint goes in. This is where the wing joint would join. Once again, this great stock material. Garbage. Um, now we have our deboned turkey. And if you can buy it like this, that's wonderful. The beauty of cooking it this way is when we cook it in the pan, we're going to cook it like this. Nice and even. And you'll notice that the thigh is just as high as the breast. The wings are tucked in nicely, and this whole thing is about two inches thick instead of the six inches that it would go in the oven. Now at this point what I'll do is I'll just trim his collar a little bit. If there's any big lumps of fat somewhere, I'll trim them. <coughs> Otherwise, the turkey is cleaned at this point. We have our one and a half sticks of butter. We have pepper. Italian seasoning. Um, let's see, you're going to want quantities. I'm going with two and a half tablespoons. Sounds great. And maybe a tablespoon of pepper, um, two teaspoons of salt, one teaspoon, two teaspoons of sage. Two teaspoons of rosemary and one teaspoon of celery seed. And then this butter I've just left out. It's kind of soft. You can microwave it slightly. You don't want to totally melt the butter. You just want the butter soft. And then we're just going to work all of our herbs into the butter and make an herb butter. And it doesn't have to be pretty because eventually this butter is going to melt. What we're going to do is we're actually going to stuff this butter. If we were to just rub the turkey down with butter, it would make this nice, beautiful golden and the butter would just run right off. But we want the butter to be in the flavor of the meat. So what we're going to do is we're going to make the turkey hold it. We're going to go up just with one finger. I'm going to push in between the skin and the breast and I'm going to make a little pocket right there. Same thing here, in between the skin and the breast. Notice I'm going in and one the hole with my finger, and then I'm moving my finger like a windshield wiper blade to open up a pocket. Then I'm going to do the same thing in the thigh. I'm going to go in between the skin and the meat. Windshield wiper. Skin and the meat. One hole. Windshield wiper. And then I'm going to take a little ball of butter, make it like a sausage, and stuff it right back up in there. Now, do the windshield wiper effect when you with the butter or just before? No, we're going to massage this butter into place. So we're just going to make like a little a little bulge right now. Got a little butter ball there, a little butter ball there. We need a little butter ball in here. So now we have got the butter in between the skin and the breast. The skin will hold the butter to the meat and then it will melt down within. So all we're going to do now is we're just going to massage that butter down across the breast. Massage it down across the breast. If it's in little clumps, that's fine. The 375 degree preheated oven is going to take care of that. And then I like to push this all the way down the leg because invariably someone loves the turkey leg. Once more right here. All the way down to the leg. Now, we've got butter underneath. 
but we need butter to make the skin all beautiful and crispy, which is really the best part of the turkey. So we're going to take some more butter and I soften it in my hands a little bit and we're just going to rub this all over the outside, everywhere. Get them a little bit in the armpits down there, a little bit underneath the breast, on top of the wing, just like this, down in here. And then I tuck the wing tips just down to the thighs, just like that. And that is the dressed bird. Now we just take the bird, the hardest part, and throw it on top of our mirepoix. And arrange it in the pan. Tuck our little wing tips down. And you'll notice this is not sticking up four inches out of the pan. This is this is just to the to the height of the pan. You can do this a day and a half before Thanksgiving, um, two days before Thanksgiving. A lot of times they come with these beautiful little lids. <coughs> you can just keep it right in the fridge. And when it's time to go, it just goes into the oven. Like I said, the oven, 375 degrees. We'll just pop it in. We're gonna cook this about 45 minutes like this and then we're going to want to flip it over that's to brown the bottom a little more and to to sort of baste it with the butter then for the last 30 minutes or so we're going to flip it back over and we're going to cook it this side up to recrisp the skin so into the oven like this for about 45 minutes 375 degrees in about the middle of your oven and that's all there is to it. Okay, what we did was we flipped the turkey over after about 45 minutes, and then we cooked it for about another 40, 45 minutes. Feels like our turkey's getting pretty close to done. We're gonna very carefully flip it back over. back up. This is to give our, now we want to crisp the skin up. We're going to want to knock off layer of our vegetables. Try to put everything back into place. We're starting to get some nice drippings in the bottom of the pan. I haven't added any water to this. This is all that's come out of the vegetables and the turkey. And we're just going to pop it back in the oven just to just to crisp up the skin and it's probably going to be in about 20 minutes, 25 minutes at this point. And when that is done, we'll temp it with our thermometer. And here we are, about 20, 25 minutes later. Our turkey is lovely and brown. Notice our leg bones have started to be exposed as the the meat has shrunk onto the thigh. Our breast is nice, nice and firm, as well as the thigh. And our thermometer in the thickest part of the thigh is reading a beautiful 165 degrees. So our turkey is illegal. You'll notice our breast meat. is also ringing in at that 165 range whereas you, your traditional style turkey, your breast meat would be closer to 175 or 180 by the time your thigh meat got to that temperature. So our turkey is beautifully cooked. Carving this bad boy is as easy as it can be. All you're going to do is cut your your wings off right there. Those can be for your presentation. Your thigh is actually only held by the skin here, so you'll just cut that skin off, and you can carve, cut that, that leg off, so you have that nice turkey leg right here. You'll see this beautiful pocket of seasonings and butter that have gotten down into the turkey. This is my favorite way to make a turkey. 
and I hope you will all give it a try, and happy Thanksgiving.